Oh, what a day for Sword Art Online. We just had the final episode of first half of Felicization, second half War of Underworld has been announced for October 2019 release and we got a reveal trailer for the next Sword Art Online game set in Underworld Felicization Licorice. Now obviously news takes precedence over the explained video so today here on my channel we will be focusing on the upcoming game Elicization Licorice. I'll first share the little information we have and then move on to trailer breakdown because we got major reveals in the trailer but spoiler warning for Elicization anime if you haven't watched episode 24 yet. First off, if you want to watch the trailer, you can click the icon on the top right. I'll use short clips and screenshots in this video as well as slowed down footage because Bandai Namco is a little too aggressive with their claims and well, I still couldn't get myself to actually work with them. You know, I'm trying this every year. Hopefully, eventually they will recognize me. But yeah, according to Dengeki, Elicization Licorice will be adapting the contents of the main storyline and this information was reinforced by the statement made by Bandai Namco US brand manager who said and I quote For the first time in a Sword Art Online video game, players will be able to faithfully follow the events of the anime series. We're also playing just as Kirito like the Hollow game so if you're a fan of the original character you are better off waiting for Fatal Blood 2 or something. Elicization is a very personal story for Kirito, Yuju and Alice and it just would be wrong from a narrative standpoint to do anything else. So I'm kind of disappointed if Kirito really is the only playable character and if we can't play as you know Yujo, Alice and the others. I'm just hoping that this is just lack of available information for the Western Bandai Namco divisions who kind of receive lacking information from their Japanese colleagues quite often. But this piece of information may lead you to believe that this is not part of the game verse canon however we got more to talk about during the trailer breakdown in a bit because this statement may not be entirely true and Elicization Licorice may indeed be taking place in the SAO game verse following the events of Fatal Bullet. But before we get there, Dengeki confirms that the game will adapt all the way from Volume 9 Elicization beginning to Volume 18 Elicization lasting, so it will include content that has not yet been adapted by the anime. This is a huge lead towards the release window of the game, considering it's not very likely that huge corporations like Kadokawa and Sony will let their main project that is the anime be spoiled with an early game release, so chances are Elicization Licorice will be coming out after the Elicization anime concludes. And to give you a reference, War of Underworld begins in October 2019 and will most certainly conclude sometime in Spring 2020. But that also means the trailer only showcases halfway through the story which is a good time to jump into the trailer for an extensive breakdown. We start with the contents of episode 23 however we already get the first sign that the game is not really following the main canon one to one. The trailer opens up in Quinella's room with Quinella having her clothes on because otherwise this game can't be PG-13 but the key difference here is the winged sword covered in ice is not the sword resulting from the fusion of the Buro sword and Yujo controlled by the memory fragment of Alice Tuberg, it is simply the Blue Rose sword itself. And sure, Blue Rose sword can be a placeholder sword here, but I would argue otherwise. This is not an in-engine cutscene, this is a fully rendered CGI cutscene right here. With an in-engine, in-game cutscene, it doesn't cost much to replace an asset, however with a fully rendered CGI scene, Things are a bit different and it is quite costly so I don't think this is a diversion here especially considering this scene already covers the ending of the human realm arc. Yujo may not have fused with the sword based on this visual alone in the game and there are more scenes suggesting this later on too. But the trailer cuts over to various scenes to give us an overview of the world, the Rulit forest where Kirito woke up, which I love how dense the environment is, it's showing us the great graphical upgrade from the likes of Fatal Bullet and Hollow Realization. Sure, Fatal Bullet had dense forest sections in some maps, but keep in mind that Elicization Licorice is an open world game and even then this dense forest looks very lively. Not just the forest itself, the light and fog effects are impressive comparing to what we have seen before in SAO games of course. 
Projectilization card just appears on screen with the sound of the Dragonborn axe hitting at Giga Cedar, reminiscent of the first teaser trailer of Elicization anime, which is always a great way to start the Elicization content. We see Kirito reaching the clearing of the Giga Cedar, and I really love this shot, showcasing the improvements on the in game character models. Fatal Bullet had, yes, detailed character models, but this looks much, much better. It really does feel like a proper 3D anime model and meshes really well with the coloring and style of the rest of the world as well, which was a troubling topic for Fatal Boot if you ask me, but yeah. You can also see these are quite unpolished models despite me liking the details of the faces, which highlights that it's probably still in early development, especially the way how the arms of Kirito and Yujo's clothes just clip into their body. We get to see Rulit from the outside as well as inside, we see Kirito and Yujo running at what appears to be the end mountains which leads to the goblin battle you will remember from episode 4 against Ugachi. The sword combat looks a little rough, similar to Axel Lord vs Ezio and Fatal Bullet sword combat, but again if the assumptions are correct the game still has around a year of development time ahead of it, so no reason to be worried about this. But then we skip a bit ahead to the academy where Alice has arrived to apprehend Yuju and Kirito and well, I'm not sure if I should highlight this as a change or not since it may just be utilizing existing locations instead of creating a church-like room, but Alice smacks Yuju out in the courtyard here rather than the inside of the building where this took place in the main canon, but god damn, look at the Osmanthus blade, it looks absolutely gorgeous and incredibly detailed. Then we cut to the actual major changes though, where Yujo Synthesis 32 is fighting against Kirito up on the central cathedral, however unlike the events of the main canon, Kirito seems to have lost the fight and Alice is compelled to intervene to save Kirito, so again more signs that we are somewhat splitting from the main canon here. And last but not least, we return to the pre-rendered CGI scene and rotate around Quinella with an incredibly detailed silvery eternity and unlike the ending of Elicization Uniting, Kirito is not holding the red rose sword here, he is holding a non-broken blue rose sword in his left hand, which is a huge sign that once again, Yujiro may not have fused with the blue rose sword and thus may not have ended up getting cut in half, hence why the blue rose sword is fully intact and still blue. This has huge implications since it would mean Elicization Licorice will not be killing off Yujiro, significantly changing the events of Elicization and let's be real, not killing off fan favorite characters is a habit of the gamers. But yeah, all in all, especially that final key detail in the pre-rendered cutscene, is a major difference that I certainly wouldn't categorize as quote unquote following the main canon. Again, these changes may be placeholders, but I strongly doubt that is the case. As mentioned earlier, pre rendered cutscenes is relatively expensive, so it's unlikely they will render other versions of it just to provide a misleading direction in the trailer. Also, historically speaking, Sword Art Online games never showcased the scene in their trailers that was different from the final product scene. So chances are, yes, despite what is being told by Bandai Namco, that is not an exact adaptation of Elicization and chances are it may even be tying in with the game wars as was hinted by Fatal Blood DLC3's secret subtilizer ending. But that's all I got for you today, hope you enjoyed this video, if you did make sure to like, comment and subscribe for more on Sword Art Online, thank you very much for watching and as usual a huge thanks to my patrons and channel members and a big welcome to the newest channel member Ricardo Henrique Souza. I'll see you soon with the Elicization episode 24 explained, until then stay cool.